Um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Duncan Murdoch. Um, and I'll just like to tell you my, my story here in a nutshell. Um, I grew up playing in nature and in Vermont and um, I developed um, a real intimate connection with nature when I was a kid. And I, I imagine a lot of, a lot of you relate. Um, and um, so I then in my adult life, I, I moved out of Vermont and I went to New York City and I lived there for uh, 14 years. Um, and uh, after that time, I decided to move back home to Vermont to uh, be in nature. Um, so this was my life in New York City. This is one of my performance groups. I was in, I was in the entertainment industry. And uh, I, I, I like this picture because it does kind of capture the frenetic energy of New York City and the, the, how fun and crazy it was. Um, but I'm, I'm glad to be back in nature and back in, in my home um, of Vermont. So um, I'm a certified nature and forest therapy guide and um, both Lisa and I were certified through the ANFT, which is the Association of Nature and Forest Therapy. Um, and that was the first association, training association set up in the United States in 2014 that started to um, teach about forest bathing as we know it. Hello everyone, thank you for being here. I am Lisa Guazda and I'm a registered nurse and board certified holistic nurse. As a young um, person, like most people in childhood, I loved playing outside, but um, really didn't dive into it until I started, um, I got my certification through the Mass General Institute of Health Professionals in mind, body, spirit. In fact, Kathleen was my mentor when I had one credit. I had to, she said, why don't you do an independent study for one credit? And um, I did it on forest therapy, forest bathing. Um, so after I finished my certification at Mass General, I went and became a certified forest therapy guide as Duncan said, with the Association of Nature and Forest Therapy. And that picture of me is one of my favorite pictures because it was taken at the training. And there's about six of us up in a tree and someone took a picture looking down on us. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I work with Duncan with his, um, his guiding business nature connection guide up here in Vermont. So we'd like to start this off and, and kind of give it our intention here. And, and it is really to, we want to inspire and educate um, people like you and offer tools and techniques to use wherever you are on your journey um, towards de developing and deepening your relationship to the natural world. And that's for your, your health and for the planet's prosperity. So yes, big question. What is, what is forest bathing? And so it is, um, it's, it's evolving and uh, there are many different versions of forest bathing um, and lots of definitions. Uh, the one that, that we've landed on um, recently is that forest bathing is an evidence-based um, and we even changed this today because before I had an older presentation that said research-based but now we can say it's evidence-based um, practice that supports well-being and healing through the immersion in forests and other natural environments. So it's not just in forests. And uh, yeah, anything to add there, Lisa? Well, I would just like to say, um, 
you know, what we've experienced when people come to be guided in forest therapy is um, their expectation can be something that it's not. So I would just like to say that it's not a practice where you identify and label, and it's not um, a practice where it's considered a workout or athletic endeavor, which are both wonderful things, but that is not forest bathing. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so it, it um, yeah, so it, it originated in Japan and uh, as you, probably know already it's 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 known as in japan shindin yoku which that that literally translates as uh taking in the atmosphere of the forest or forest bathing and that's shindin yoku and those are the japanese characters you can kind of see like a little house almost with like beams, you know, coming down on it. And I like the middle characters. I, I like to think those are people. And so it uh, was created in 1982 in Japan by the Japanese ministries of agriculture, forestry and fisheries. And um, it was a, a, a nationwide uh, initiative um, to somehow address the growing stress epidemic um, and, uh, um, and somehow take care of its population um, who were uh, working, overworking and overstressed. And um, so it was decided, um, this crazy idea was to use nature to help with that. And so um, there are forest bathing um, bases throughout um, Japan <clears throat> in metropolitan areas as well. And these are designated for forest bathing. Um, and they, um, when it was, the first base was created, there was, uh, there's a research center that uh, came along with it and um, to track and research this idea um, to really validate this idea that nature can be used to support uh, people's health and well-being. And so really they set out to prove and to explore what is it about nature that feels good uh, intuitively. Uh, it's something we all um, can attest to. So uh, there's uh, a lot of research that, that came out of Japan and has also research has popped up and is continuing throughout the world. Um, and we discovered a lot of really cool things uh, through science that um, about nature. For example, phytoncides, which we'll get into, Lisa will talk, talk about that in a little bit. Um, those are aromatic compounds released by trees um, just the simple patterning in nature, um, the fractal patterns have been shown to have a, a relaxing effect. Um, there's uh, bacteria in soil that uh, if you're a gardener, you may know that when you smell the earth or smell some soil that it also has a relaxing effect. Um, air quality is, is, is really, is, is really big. You know, when you take a nice deep breath of fresh air, um, soundscapes. Um, There's just an article I read the other day that, that it was a research um, about how nature sounds have been shown to, to help reduce stress and anxiety. Um, aromas of nature, already we have aromatherapy, just the tactileness, touching nature sunlight. Um, and what else is it about nature that, uh, that we can discover? So 
So that's to say, yeah, the science is is catching up to what we've what we intuitively feel and know. Here's just some some stills from some of the, the research. They they bring these poor poor participants out um, and 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 um, you know some of them sit out in chairs and watch traffic, and others sit in the woods. And they track that. <laughs> okay, thanks, Duncan. So Duncan mentioned in a previous slide about fights and sides. And fights and sides, um, I like to refer to them as nature's essential oils. They are substances admitted by plants and trees. It the term was first coined by B.P. Token in 1928, and he described them as substances produced by all plants which may or may not be volatile and which have an influence on other organisms. In Latin, phyton means plant and side means to exterminate. So to so not that the plant is exterminating other plants, but phytoncides are released into the um, by the plants and trees when they perceive a threat, and that could be anything from a bacteria, fungi, or disease. There are 100 different types of phytoncides that can be detected detected in the forest air, and about 5,000 of them have defended plants you know, released by plants and to defend them from disease. The phytoncides work by inhibiting or preventing the growth of an attacking organism, and they play an important part in plant immunity. The alpha, limonene, and pinene are usually the most abundant in the forest because they're found in spruce, pine, and fir. And a couple examples of plants that emit phytoncides are garlic and onions, and then there's so many spices. So the phytonides, the plants and the trees release the phytoncides, stumbling over my word, sorry. Um, the phytoncides are microbial. So they're releasing them in response to a threat that they're feeling. And they're, in that process, they're giving them to us human beings when we are out in nature or forest bathing. We take them in, we take in the phytoncides. And there's been lots of research done that orig has originated in Japan. And now there's been lots of research and studies throughout the world that have prov proven that the phytoncides when taken in by a human through nature of forest bathing, it decreases the, cort the stress hormone cortisol. So therefore decreases your stress and anxiety. I think we all know that stress is an underlining cause of most ailments. So if we decrease the stress um, and decrease the cortisol hormone, we are in turn, decreasing our blood pressure, our heart rate, increasing our parasympathetic nervous system, increasing our immune response, and overall increasing our resiliency. So underneath um, each of these bullets, I have a study to refer to, but there are many, many studies that have done, that have um, been done if you would like more, we're happy to share those with you. The one that fascinates me the most is just is the, um, the fights and sides when inhaled or taken in by a human, it increases natural killer cells. There are studies that show spending time in forest in nature and in taking in the fights and sides increase the natural killer cells, which are cells that attack viruses and they also the phytoncides also increase proteins, anti-cancer anti proteins. So that those studies are ongoing, but they have found a link that directly links the phytoncides 
to producing these anti-cancer proteins and basically preventing um, or fighting the cancer virus. The phytoncides they have shown have also improved mood and decreases, reduces depression. In the study that I have up here, um, they took two groups of people and they did cognitive behavioral therapy with both groups. One group, they did the therapy in a forested area. Another group they did in a city without any forest. And the, the group that they did the cognitive behavioral therapy on in the forest um, showed that their cerebral areas were was more calm in that their salivary um, cortisol has decreased and their moods increased on the palm scale. So all of these together just increases our resiliency, um, you know, the decrease of the hormone cortisol, increases stress, the in increasing our immune response, improving our mood, just increases our resiliency the activity of our parasympathetic nervous system and then the decreasing the activity of our sympathetic nervous system. Which just, it goes on, right? It, the, what these phytoncides are spending time in nature, in forest bathing, um, it's just amazing to me what has been around us and what we have known intuitively since childhood that feels so good that it science has caught up and has proven that you know it then decreases your blood pressure and your heart rate increases concentration and memory increases productivity decreases insomnia it helps you cope with cope with anger and addiction and just helps you find peace which is a gift in itself So again, just to reiterate, an we have opportunity, and it sounds like from everyone's introduction that the majority of us are um, very fortunate to have wonderful outdoor spaces close to where we live. So that opportunity for immediate release from stress in a world of all the stimulation and urbanization, but we can access that, re that daily, that it's it doesn't take any, um, any special equipment or, or clothing or shoes and that you can access it daily. Um, and the effect can last up to seven days. There's, I've seen recently, there's some, day, some studies that are saying 30 days, but seven days seem pretty firm. So being outside, taking in the fights and size, being in nature, forest bathing, to have that effect for seven days gives you an increased opportunity to rest, restore, and reflect. So as, as guides, um, we look to the science and we look to these understood benefits um, but, and we also look to uh, what's beyond and what happens, uh, what happens to us when we, when we remember that we are intrinsically tied, we're not separate from all uh, other beings. So how to practice forest bathing? Um, really the key, um, to practice forest bathing is through the senses and, uh, we, you know, the, the five senses, the traditional senses and beyond and, and, um, bringing our awareness to nature, to our environment through, through the senses. So through feeling. And so Lisa and I and guides all over the world um, offer um, what's called a, a 
what's called as a standard standard sequence. And that's what we've been trained to, to conduct in our, in our walks. Um, so um, official forest bathing was referenced quite a few times in the, in the beginning. And um, this, I, this is, I think as a, this is, I guess what you could call official, um, the how to officially go on a, a guided forest bathing walk with a certified nature and forest therapy guide. This is what you would expect. Um, so the walks are typically two to three hours. Um, and that's, that's the amount of time that where you can really start to um, immerse yourself, your full self. Um, they're slow and leisurely. Uh, Lisa mentioned before, it's, it's not a hike. It's not a, we, there's no destination. So um, that nice mindfulness um, activity we had in the beginning or the, the poem some, saying, you know, there's no something about destination where we are here now. And that's, that is um, also what you've, you'll find during the forest bathing walks. Um, they are less than a mile. They're not strenuous at, um, at all. Um, and forest bathing walks that we conduct are in groups or one-on-one -on -one with your guide. And you expect to do, you expect in a, in a forest bathing, guided forest bathing walk to have a lot of silence, a lot of time to be um, alone really in nature, but also it, having a, a shared experience with the group um, and a shared experience with your guide. And so you'd have time uh, in silence and also time to, to share and talk about um, your experience. And so uh, we offer a series of what's called invitations and I'll get to that in the, in the next slide. Uh, and we also typically close out our walks with a tea ceremony. And so this is a um, anatomy of a forest bathing walk. And I'll walk you through it right now. Um, so on the left there is you, the one that did a little somersault and you arrive and then we gather. So that bubble right next to it, we all, we gather either with your guide or with a, a, a group of people. And we have an introduction. We introduce each other in circle and we introduce ourselves also to the land. Um, at that point, I, uh, or the guide would offer the first invitation. Um, and the invitation is a prompt or um, a suggestion for you to experience your environment through um, in a particular way. So it would likely be through one or a, a combination of the senses and for a particular period of time. Usually it's about, I would say 20 minutes or so um, after you've received the invitation and you can accept or, or if it doesn't resonate with you, we like to just allow people their own space to experience nature in the way they know how and the way that feels comfortable for them. So with that prompt and suggestion, then we walk into uh, the natural environment um, through the threshold. And uh, it's kind of a meaningful um, entry there where we're not only entering into the natural environment or the forest or any kind of bioregion, we're also entering into um, a way of being for this two hours. It's kind of an agreed uh, amongst us that we'd be experiencing the world in, in a different way or, or a way that we don't typically immerse ourselves in for this long a period of time. So we enter and we walk then with that invitation in mind. You uh, kind of walk in an amorphic group, um, sensing the environment. And then we go ahead and gather again. We 
and we share. Um, so there's often an auditory calling. So uh, like if we have a flute or the guide has uh, a bell or something to call us together and we, we share what happened during that invitation. Uh, what was that like for you? Um, did anything come up for you? And, um, and then the, the cycle continues. So I, the guide then offers the next invitation after we've all shared. And then we walk with that sense. Again, we gather, share the next invitation. And somewhere along the way, typically we, have, we invite participants to have a sit spot. And so that is a time for you to simply go out into the natural environment and sit and uh, find a place that just calls to you. Um, and so we spend some time just sitting and then we come back together and we, we speak about our experience. And um, at the very end, so there's usually maybe four or five invitations throughout the walk. And at the end, we have that tea ceremony that I spoke of. And that tea ceremony um, gives us an opportunity to taste the forest or taste nature. And so we like to get uh, forage a, uh, a plant from that environment or that region and, um, and taste it all together. <laughs> and then we exit the threshold and we're back into the, the, t the tamed world, if you will. And so that is a description of, I guess, an official forest bathing experience. Um, and though there is no right way to forest bathe, everyone has their own version of forest bathing. Um, and I, you're right to assume that you probably are doing it and you probably have already. Um, and so we like to say to, you know, you don't need to wait for an invitation from a guide. You can invite yourself into the forest or into nature or spend, give yourself some time to be with nature. And when there isn't time to have, you know, a full two hour experience, um, there's, uh, you can also have your micro doses of nature when time is when that time is short so if you have plants in your house and you, and um, um, things like that you have you're experiencing nature in small in small little ways you don't always need to go deep into the deep into the wild to have to have those experiences of nature so this slide just gives some suggestions and when you don't have the time to, to spend the two to three hours outside or access to a guide um, in how to invite yourself or allow yourself to take in, um, you know, in forest bathe and shorter, simpler ways and to incorporate it into your daily life. Um, First is to take breaks outdoors, you know, if you're working inside to try to get your breaks outdoors. And um, if you're in an area where there's a tree, you know, when you're on a, a tree or a plant or a bush, if you could um, maybe spend time with it during your breaks daily or weekly and develop a relationship with it by using your senses and um, observing and smelling and, and touching. Another thing to do is to create, have a sit spot. If you have a favorite spot in your yard, um, or it sounds like everyone has some nice places close to their homes to find a place that you like to visit and try to visit that for say five, 10 minutes a day or a week or a month and just notice, just notice what is happening at your sit spot and um, how you were feeling when you were there. Are there any changes to anything that is happening going on at the sit spot? 
Um, I think most people who work in the healthcare in our healthcare facility understands the importance of being able to gaze out a window at the sky at plants or trees that, you know, plants or flowers that you put in the room. Um, there are studies that have shown um, a, a better recovery and healing when you can have nature incorporated in your view. So again, decorate your indoor space with plants or paintings of nature. Um, look at photos of nature, you can keep um, you know, those old calendars that have beautiful photographs of nature around for you to, to browse through. One of my favorites is creating a nature table or altar with things that you find outside that have special meaning to you or don't have any meaning to you. But when you bring them in and you have them there and you can at any time touch them and smell them and observe them, um, it just brings a lot of enjoyment and it's something that you can easily share with family and friends. And just sharing what you've experienced outdoors with family and friends um, is a nice way to also experience forest bathing in nature. The last item we have suggestion is going on a virtual forest bathing online. And I'm going to let Duncan speak about this. Um, he has, well, he was asked with the University of Vermont to develop um, virtual forest bathing to work to help to do to do a study that never went forward for th things unrelated. Um, so that prompted him to create to continue this virtual forest bathing. And then when COVID hit, he created this app that he's going to talk to a bit right now on another way how to bring forest bathing and nature into your life, particularly if you're immobile or can't get outdoors or um, don't have access to the outdoors. Yeah, so I... Um... So I, I've, I've created an app uh, called Forest Bathing Life. And as like Lisa was saying, I, I, I started this for the University of Vermont. Um, and it was a study to test to see if uh, forest bathing helped with um, the graduate nursing students sense of resiliency. Um, so I created an audio program that was first a um, a podcast um, and it was a five walk series. And you know, when you're at a, an art museum and, and, you, and you get those kind of guided audio art uh, tours, um, it's kind of like that. So you have your device with you but, and uh, you listen through the speaker through, you listen to um, uh, my, my guidance through the natural environment that you choose to be in. So it, it will work wherever you are. Um, and so it's kind of like having a guide in your pocket. And um, I also created a, a whole like educational program around it. So you can learn more about forest bathing. Um, and there's also a sense of community with that as well. Um, so there are other participants in the, in the program that, um, and we converge once a week and we have like forest bathing circles in a way, um, virtually. And so we talk about our experience and, um, we also, also conduct virtual forest bathing walks. And, um, so people can participate either if they're immobile or if they can't get outside from their, their, uh, their home. And so I basically broadcast a live uh, forest bathing experience. And other participants can, can uh, partake um, while they're forest bathing too, in the same fashion, having their device with them, and they just listen to the, the guidance. So um, yeah. So that's, that's using uh, a term called technological nature. Um, and technological nature is, is um, 
um, is just is is just what I was describing. So, um, and uh, technological nature isn't as good as real nature, um, but it's better than no nature at all. And I also want to remind us that we are, yeah, I mean, we're experiencing forest bathing together right now through, through the gift of technology, which has been really amazing during, during COVID. And I'm sure we'll carry this forward, we, how we can all connect to each other and also connect to each other um, about nature. So I'd like to uh, read this quote. Um, and it goes, when you realize the earth is so much more than simply your environment, you'll be moved to protect her in the same way as you would yourself. This is the kind of awareness, the kind of awakening that we need. And the future of the planet depends on whether we're able to cultivate this insight or not. The earth and all species on earth are in real danger. Yet if we can develop a deep relationship with the earth, we'll have enough love, strength, and awakening in order to change our way of life. And that's Thich Nhat Hanh. And so up until this point, we've been talking about forest bathing and its benefits that it gives us. Um, and though what's, we look to those benefits as guides, we also look to beyond. And so this kind of touches on that. Um, it's beyond the, um, it's nature isn't here for us to consume as like a, a medication or a pill or something we just take to feel better for our own self. Um, it's more than that, right? It's, it's, um, it's, it's larger, it's, it's larger than that. And so it's really about relationship, um, having a relationship with the natural world and relationship with nature and deepening that relationship and that understanding. And yeah, it's a reciprocal relationship. So we're giving as well. Um, and a great way, a great first step for us to give is, is to give our presence in our awareness and uh, forest bathing allows us to do that by experiencing our environment through the senses and less through our analytical minds. So giving our presence and giving our gratitude and then yeah restoration. Lisa you want to talk to that? Yes. Um... So restoration, it's, you know, it's a process, restorative process. And we see that in nature and that the, um, what they, what nature gives to us restores us. And then what just nature doesn't really ask, um, or the green world doesn't really ask anything from us but just developing that relationship, reciprocating, restores um, us as humans, but as individuals with what the green world gives us, but with us reciprocating that, it um, gives back to the green world. So it's a wonderful restorative process for not only a person or individual, but for our environment in the natural world. And that um, it's just beautiful, the deepening of relationships 
reciprocating and then the result is is restorative of our health and then of the green world. So thank you very much for 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 listening. Um, there's a lot of information on the website Nature Connection Guide, um, and there's uh, there's uh, there are books. There are more research articles and blogs and videos and um, and lots of lots of goodies you can find find there. Um, and also there's that uh, Forest Bathing Life app too. You can check out, it's on the, um, it's, you download it for free and kind of poke around and, and, and check it out. Um, and so we want to continue, continue this journey with you. So we really appreciate you, you listening and we're really um, curious to know what your questions are and uh, we may have questions for you as well. I'd like to add my gratitude also for everyone being here. And um, it, was, it was great. Thank you.